quagmire is really a false sort of a critique because it says really the problem here is what the war is doing to the United States. Are we able to win? Are we winning in Iraq? Do you want the United States to win in Iraq? I can't tell who's winning and who's losing. Do you believe that we are currently winning in Iraq? We are not winning, but we are not losing. Um, we are losing. We're, we're winning. You're winning this war? I couldn't tell you. And a big problem with media focus is that it sees the war through the eyes of the Americans, through the eyes of the occupiers, rather than those who are bearing the brunt of the war in human terms. We have been too often disappointed by the optimism of the American leaders, both in Vietnam and Washington, to have faith any longer in the silver linings they find in the darkest clouds. In early 1968, Walter Cronkite told CBS viewers that the war couldn't be won. For it seems now more certain than ever that the bloody experience of Vietnam is to end in a stalemate. This and that was instantly, and through time even more so, heralded as the tide has turned, as Lyndon Johnson is reputed to have said when he saw Cronkite give that report, I've lost middle America. And it was presented as not only a turning point quite often, but also a sort of a moral statement by the journalistic establishment. Well, I would say yes and no. It was an acknowledgment that the United States, contrary to official Washington claims, was not winning the war in Vietnam and could not win. But it was not a statement that the war was wrong. A problem there is that if the critique says this war is bad because it's not winnable, then the response is, oh yeah, we'll show you it can be winnable, or the next war will Open be winnable. Open the door. So that critique doesn't challenge the prerogatives of military expansion or aggression, if you will, or empire. And a deeper critique says, whether you can win or not, either way, empire enforced at the point not of a bayonet, but of the cruise missile, that's not acceptable. Over the last five decades, we have witnessed a wave of U.S. military interventions, a series of bombings, invasions, and long-term occupations. Undertaken, we have been told by one president after another, with the most noble of intentions, and paid for with the lives of young Americans and countless others around the world. What has occurred with one war after another is still with us. These dynamics are in play in terms of the U.S. occupation of Iraq, looking at other countries such as Iran, and the future will be replicated to the extent that we fail to understand what has been done with these wars in the past. The news media have generally bought into and promoted the notion that it's up to the president to make foreign policy decisions. This smart guy in the Oval Office has access to all the information. He knows more than we do. He's the commander in chief. The American people have no major role to play, and nor should they, because after all, they don't have the knowledge or capability to be responsive to the real situation. That was certainly true during the Vietnam War, as it was to be later, time after time, there were people in Congress who raised these issues, and they simply were marginalized by the news media, even though in retrospect, maybe especially because in retrospect, they had it right, and the conventional wisdom and the president were wrong. However difficult this vote may be, some of us must urge the use of restraint. Our country is in a state of mourning. Some of us must say, let's step back for a moment. Let's just pause just for a minute. And think through the implications of our actions today so that this does not spiral out of control. As we act, let us not become the evil that we deplore. Thank you, and I yield the balance of my time. Gentlewoman's time has expired. And this is a very common motif of history in the last several decades, where people who at the time 
were portrayed as loners, as mavericks, uh, as outside of the mainstream of wisdom, turned out to understand the historical moment. We got to back our president. Since when do we have to back our president or should we when the president is proposing an unconstitutional act? The best example is Wayne Morse, the senior senator from Oregon, who beginning in 1964 was a voice in the congressional wilderness. Senator Morse was unusual in that he challenged the very prerogative of the U.S. government to go to war against Vietnam. He said, it's up to the American people to formulate foreign policy. Senator, the Constitution gives to the President of the United States the sole responsibility for the conduct of foreign policy. Couldn't be more wrong. You couldn't make a more unsound legal statement than the one you have just made. Yeah, this, this, this is the promulgation of an old fallacy that foreign policy belongs to the President of the United States. To whom does That's it belong nonsense. then, Senator? It belongs to the American people. All right, and then our how, Constitutional how fathers can, made it then very, how very can, clear. Where does the President fit into what this I'm in saying the responsibility is, scale? What I'm saying is under our Constitution, all the President is is the administrator of the people's foreign policy. Those are his prerogatives. And I'm pleading that the American people be given the facts about you know, foreign Senator, policy. That the American people cannot formulate Why and execute foreign policy. Why, you're a man of little faith in democracy if you make that kind no, of announcement. I have complete faith in the ability of the American people to follow the facts if you'll give them. It isn't and my a charge lack of against faith, my Senator. government is we're not giving the American people the facts. And that's a kind of faith in democracy that's not in fashion among the Washington press corps or the power elite in the nation's capital. But it's a good reading of the Constitution and it's a good definition of democracy. Independent journalist I.F. Stone said that all governments lie and nothing they say should be believed. Now Stone wasn't conflating all governments and he wasn't saying that governments lie all the time. But he was saying that we should never trust that something said by a government is automatically true. Especially our own because we have a responsibility to go beneath the surface because the human costs of war, the consequences of militaristic policies, what Dr. King called the madness of militarism, they can't stand the light of day if most people understand the deceptions that lead to the slaughter and the human consequences of the carnage. If we get that into clear focus, we can change the course of events of this country, but it's not gonna be easy and it will require dedication to searching for truth. Time comes when silence is betrayal. That time has come for us, even when pressed by the demands of inner truth. Men do not easily assume the task of opposing their government's policy, especially in time of war. And I knew that I could never again raise my voice against the violence of the oppressed in the ghettos without having first spoken clearly to the greatest purveyor of violence in the world today, my own government. What do they think as we test out our latest weapons on them? just as the Germans tested out new medicine and new tortures in the concentration camps of Europe. Now that is little left to build on save bitterness. We are met by deep but understandable mistrust. To speak for them is to explain this lack of confidence in Western words, and especially their distrust of American intentions now. The world now demands a maturity of America that we may not be able to achieve. This way of settling differences is not just a nation that continues year after year to spend more money on military defense than on programs of social uplift is approaching spiritual death. Somehow this madness must cease. We must stop now. 
I speak as one who loves America, to the leaders of our own nation. The great initiative in this war is ours. The initiative to stop it must be ours.